And I can tell you, your users worldwide, they all want to pay differently. That's what we talked about yesterday. We talked about um, a lot of the people who are still unbanked, but I can tell you even the people who are banked and who have credit cards have different ways of paying. In Germany, uh, for example, like the amount of people that have a credit card is around 10%, right? And you're like, how, how the hell do they pay? Well, they have bank accounts and they have bank cards and they pay a lot still with cash, but they also pay using bank cards that just don't have 16 digit numbers on it. Same thing goes for the Netherlands, where I'm from. The people who have a credit card generally only have it for like holidays, for um, kind of buying bigger items that they, you know, they don't want to necessarily pay out of their bank account directly, but they don't do their daily purchases on their credit cards. Let's do another joke, okay? Yeah. Uh, so, credit card walks into a bar, bartender says, you're new to this joint, aren't you? Credit card looks at him and says, yeah, I just discovered it. That's a very American one. That's like the discover card. I don't think I've ever seen one in Europe. Um, so the next step is like eight. Um, and this one is brilliant. Credit cards forms with a reset button. I don't know why people do this. This is, um, it's a bit hard to see on this screen. It's, oh, actually. Oh, Keep clicking the wrong button. Um, full on credit card formula, you've gone through all the trouble of filling everything in here, and then there's a clear button. Why, why would you ever have a clear button on a credit card form? If I, if I would want to reset that, wouldn't I just refresh the page? Yes. Um, I love this one, because um, this one is especially horrible, because the submit button is over there, and the reset is over there. I don't know how you guys are, but for me, most of the time, my submit button is on the right-hand corner, not on the left-hand corner. Uh, maybe if you have a right-to-left language, but that's not what this form is in. Uh, it might be the other way around. But this is ridiculous. Why, why would you ever do that? It's like somebody's filled it all in, they reset the form. You've lost them. They're gone. They're not coming back. They're actually upset with you now. Um, number nine, where was I again? Uh, I love this one. This, is, this has got very little to do with credit card forms, but it's more about uh, forms in general. This is Apple. Um, as you can see, they have the nice kind of like inline hint of what everything is. So I've started filling this in. I've tapped into this. What field is this? Because it's not name. Name is over there. Um, it's not street address, because street address is there. What is that form? Like, because I've tapped into that form and started typing, I've lost complete sense of what that form, what that field is supposed to be, uh, which is absolutely amazing. Um, I'm guessing it's company name. Uh, I, I, I actually found this screenshot somewhere else. I don't actually know what it is. Um, I think it's probably company name, which is really weird. Um, what we do is like we do this thing where we have the inline kind of text, but then the moment you start typing in, it kind of moves the label above. And this is something I've seen like more and more uh, forms kind of take adapt. And it's just a very good way of making sure your user never loses track of where they were. Okay, one more joke, final one. Okay, the American Express walks into a bar in Moscow. Martin says, sorry mate, you aren't allowed here without a visa. Yeah. <laughs> ah, come on, come on, that, that, that's the good one. That's the good one, I said the best for last. Uh, okay, I hope inspired you a little bit to, uh, you know, to look at the way you do forms, to look at the way you do payments, and look at the way you kind of treat your customers in their experience. Uh, I really enjoy being here in Dubai. Um, this is, I think, the third DroidCon I'm speaking at. And I, I love joining them. Um, I want to put some credit where credit is due. A lot of this stuff comes from bad donation forms, uh, .tumblr.com, uh, which is a really good resource of just horrible, horrible UX. Uh, there's a couple of these. I've been trying to find a few which are more mobile based, and there's a couple of them too, but none of them as good as this one. Uh, I also want to make you aware that we're doing this hackathon series called Battle Hack. Uh, it's a big global hackathon series. Uh, we're not coming to Dubai this year but maybe next year. Uh, if you're a bit confused why there's Vikings there, uh, so we have 14 cities and the winners of each city will win an axe. 
uh, before they are sent to the finals in San Jose. Uh, this is this year's axe. Last year's, the first year axe was about that size and was actually sharp. We had to go get it blunted and it was still sharp. Uh, last year's axe was about, from the ground up, about that high. And this one is about the same length. Now, you're thinking like, okay, what's the difference with last year? This one, this one glows in the dark. Right, so it has uh, it has full on kind of we got full Tron style this year, so it's got full LED wires in there, and we had a lot of fun with that. Um, yeah, as you can see, I'm very serious. Uh, thank you for everything. Uh, thank you for listening to me, and I'll open the floor to uh, for any questions. Cheers. <coughs> any questions? Gentleman here in the front. All right. So, so wait for the microphone. Um, we've been testing uh, uh, credit cards and charges uh, from different cities and states uh, through our clients that live in Kansas. Other people are using Sandbox, mm. your PayPal Sandbox. Mm -hmm. um, is there any other way that a charge can actually go through, and especially that the clients want a report that indicates? exactly how many people were charged, how many, what, what cities were in, because they're doing all these algorithms. Is there a system that does that automatically? I'm not sure what the question is. So the question is, um, we're using Sandbox right now for PayPal. Yes. Your, your Sandbox platform. Yeah. Um, uh, however, it doesn't give you reports where it doesn't give you an indication of how many people registered online paid for something for the services uh, in each state. So we, our client wants a report uh, of that, so yeah. they can give it to the investors or they can give it to different people. No, you'd have to do that yourself. We, we actually don't even, um, we don't have an API for you to kind of get those transactions out. You need to keep track of your own transaction IDs. That is pretty much just because of uh, PCI compliance, as far as I understand. I see. Yeah. Because otherwise, somebody can, if somebody gets your credentials, they can start scraping everything out. Right. Even for testing platforms on Sandbox? Yeah. The Sandbox is a mirror of life. That's the goal. I see. So we're not going to offer something in Sandbox that is not available in life. Because then you'd be confused why it is in Sandbox but not in life. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we'd have to develop something in-house, you think, or well, is there tools On every transaction, there? every time a transaction happens, you end up with a transaction ID. You store that transaction ID and then you can query each transaction and you can query the address of that user for each transaction and get that information out. But I think that's a bit beyond what the people here probably want to talk about, so right. let's talk afterwards. Thank you so much. Ooh, question over there. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, just want to, if you don't mind, uh, elaborating a little bit on tokenization. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm, I'm from the business side, not a technical person. Is this something that I would use or that I would come to you to do for charging on my site as a service provider? Or well, is the tokenization. Or is this something for uh, the payment uh, companies to use with you? No, this is the way, this is the way we handle the payments for you. So what happens is um, every time you use Braintree, it's like a two-step process. The first one is uh, the, you present the user with a form. They fill in their details. Right? And the moment they hit submit, it exchanges their details, whether or not that's their PayPal credentials or their, uh, uh, or their, their credit card credentials. It sends those not to your server, because if they hate your server, then you need to be like PCI compliant level four or something like that um, to actually be able to take care of that. You don't want to do that. Instead, we send them to our server. We make sure we are PCI compliant, right? And send back to your, in your form is a little token. Now that token, to you, that is like a credit card. So you can treat it as a credit card. So we normally you have all the credit card teachers and say, charge this. You can now say, this token, charge this. But the great thing is it's tied to your account. So this is just a technical implementation detail. But on your account, it means that if you store all these token in your, tokens in your database, you're not storing credit card details. You can treat them as credit card details, but they aren't credit card details. If somebody was to access, hack into our servers and get those tokens, am I at risk? Yeah. 
Say again? If somebody were to hack into the servers and get those tokens, would yeah. that be the same thing or we're still safe? You're still safe because the tokens are tied to your API credentials. I mean, of course, you still have the obligation to keep those details safe, but it means that those there's, there's two reasons why this is a lot more secure. The first one is like, if you do get hacked and they do get your stuff, the only thing we need to do is revoke all these credentials. We basically revoke your API credentials, right? So that means that the, say you have a million users, these million users don't all have to get new credit cards, right? Which is a pain in the ass for your users. So the responsibility is purely with you. The second thing is if they don't get your, if they only get your tokens but not your API credentials, which if you're a sensible developer, you keep those separate, um, they can't actually do anything with these tokens because they are specifically tied to your API credentials. So that means like if I steal them, I, I still can't do anything with that. I can't, can't make any transactions. So at that moment, again, we will revoke your API credentials, give you some new ones, migrate your tokens and we'll probably send you a list of big to of token mapping so you can update your database. Yeah, but not before you've actually fixed that leak. <laughs> Any other questions? I Any normally get a lot of like credit card questions everywhere. Any plans to spread to the Middle East? Oh, sorry, Mike. <laughs> Any plans to spread to the Middle East? Any plans to what? To you need to speak to the microphone. Any plans to brain tree come to the Middle East? For brain tree to come to the Middle East, I don't know. I don't know. Um, we, we recently launched. We recently launched in APAC. Uh, so we launched in Singapore, in Japan, and a whole bunch of other countries. I think Malaysia. Uh, and I think we are we are very actively trying to grow brain tree to a similar scale as uh, PayPal is. Because PayPal is active in like 190 countries or something, uh, or at least 190 currencies, where we want to, you know, we want to get Braintree. One of the reasons, one of the interesting things of the PayPal Braintree acquisition is that we can use that kind of PayPal knowledge to bring Braintree to all these other countries. So it's definitely on the roadmap, but when it's happening, I don't know.